music, theater, and interviews. Your one-stop shop for curing the blues. It's showtime with Call Me Adam. Adam, we're going to be there. Adam, you're on the air. Hey, guys. Well, we are back. It's showtime with Call Me Adam, and that was Teal Wick singing Deep Blue by Brad Ross. We are so excited to have Teal here. And if you guys have questions for her, the phone lines are open. So please call in 646-478-0328. You can also tweet me at callmeadamnyc and uh, we'll get your questions answered. So welcome, Teal Wicks. Hey, what's up? It's good to be here. <laughs> it's great to have you. Thank you. We have so much to talk about. Um, yeah. You, first of all, I was going through the list of, like, accolades you have gotten over the, the, the years since, since you've been performing. It's amazing. I mean, you were named 2011 Hottest Girl uh, <laughs> alongside Aaron Tivet as Hottest Guy. I mean, that's pretty incredible well, to get. Yeah, he's pretty yeah. hot stuff. I'm kind of yeah. like, really good at me? But yes. I, I think that. That's very sweet. That's very sweet. Yes, you were also 2011 Broadway World Boston Award for Best Actress in a Musical, and again in 2012. For the, well, you were Broadway World Connecticut in 2012 Award for right. Best Actress in, in a yes. Musical, and uh, you also there was also an online poll where you won Favorite Elphaba and Wicked per, Favorite Wicked Personality of the Year. <laughs> so you have a lot of people who love you. That's really sweet. That's really sweet. I appreciate all of it. It is. It's terrific. And you, um, you're you're very well known for playing Elphaba in Wicked. And mm. I thought we would start by talking about some of that. Um, yeah. You you performed Elphaba in Wicked in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and on Broadway. And you've performed the role over. 500 times. I mean, you. it was over 500 times just between the two years in L.A. and San Francisco. So, oh, my gosh. I mean, and then wow. you threw a Broadway in there. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Broadway. Into it. What did you love most about playing Elphaba? Um, she's just quite the character. She's like, she's, her, the role is, uh, is a true journey from, you know, beginning of the show to the very end. So it's kind of like you're shot out of a cannon and it's kind of like a roller coaster. Once you're on, you can't really get off and you're just charging through it, which is, it's tiring, but it's also very exhilarating because it's easy to get on the, to get on the ride and just go with her story. You know, there's not a lot of time to stop and think about what I'm doing wrong or something that didn't land as well. You know, you just kind of keep barreling through. So it's it's very exciting and it's very rewarding because she goes on such an emotional and uh, and I don't want to say spiritual, but I don't know if that's really the right word. But she <laughs> she, she grows a lot as a person. So um, it's it's fun. It's rewarding in that, and we get to sing some insane songs, and the audiences are always incredible. Mm. It kind of felt like a rock concert sometimes, so that's great. Yes, well, the audiences definitely loved loved you and loved the show. I mean, in, in Los Angeles, it was the most financially successful musical in L.A. history, which is oh amazing. Yeah. yeah. And then in San Francisco, I mean, it was seen by nearly a million people, and you were scored by fans. I mean, both in Los Angeles and San Francisco and Broadway, but as a result of your run in San Francisco, you actually had a group of fans that created a group called T-Wikis, and mm -hmm. I know yeah. they're out there listening. They are very excited that you're on the air tonight. Um, what's it? Yeah. What's it like <laughs> to have your own dedicated fan club like this? Um. Uh. It's very surreal. I sometimes don't, I still am very surprised by it. They're all very, very sweet. My Twikis are very, very kind people and very supportive of the theater and arts. And um, so that's really awesome. They sort of love everybody that, that 
they always become fans of all the people that I work with and follow their career. So I'm like, I feel mm. like they've been very supportive of everyone. And they genuinely adore people's work and appreciate their work. And I don't know, it's just, it's just crazy to think that I've actually done something and have done something important enough that, that people want to keep seeing me do stuff and follow me. And, oh, mm. that's nice. It's terrific. It's terrific that they're that they're so dedicated and that they not only follow you but then they follow a lot of the people you work with. I think that's yeah, terrific. I do too. Because there's awesome people out there. So yes, you know. Yes. Um, you it, while you were in Wicked um, throughout the, the different t- cities, did you did you vary your performance at all or? You know, because you perform the role so many times, how did you keep it fresh for yourself? Um, well, well, it's, sometimes I was really tired, so I probably <laughs> might have been pacing myself a bit more, maybe taking the lower note options and the higher note options. So that's the difference. Um, with also but sometimes you just got to do what you can to get through it. Um, you know, and still hold, you know, just tell the story. Sometimes it's mm-hmm. nice to like, well, maybe I'll simplify my vocal pyrotechnics and just kind of focus on the storytelling. Um, so, you know, that varies. And then just live theater, it's, you know, it's new every night. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the beauty of theater. And, uh, and kind of doing Wicked for such a long time, Especially when I got to Broadway, I felt so comfortable and felt like I knew the role so well that it was just fun to just to do it, and I didn't have to like really worry about connecting all the dots because they were already connected, and I could just live in the moment. And mm-hmm. I always I always had amazing cast members who were really present and wonderful to act opposite. So that's always that's what makes it different too. And it's, Mm. That's that's ter- that that's terrific. It's good that you found ways to keep it fresh within with you know with doing it for so long. And that yeah. it's true. Live theater does lend itself to having it be different every night. Yeah. So we actually have to take a break. Um, okay. So everybody, I hope you're enjoying this time so far with Teal Wicks. Uh, when we come back from break, we're gonna talk with her about her upcoming show at 54 Below on May 8th. Uh, We're going to go to break now with one of Teal's favorite songs, Cry to Me by Solomon Burke. So we'll be right back. Hey, guys, we are back with It's Showtime with Call Me Adam on YTP Radio, and we are talking with Teal Wicks. Uh, We just finished talking with her about her time in Wicked, both in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Broadway. And now we're going to be talking about her upcoming solo show at 54 Below on May 8th. And before I start with my questions, we have a caller on the line. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi. How are you? Hi, Adam. I'm good. Thank you for calling. What's your What's your question for Teal? Uh, well, I'm just calling to say that I'm really looking forward to her solo show and very excited and happy for her. Uh, so on behalf of the Twinkies, uh, I want to say break a leg. And I was wondering what made you to finally decide to do a solo show. And some of the Twinkies are wondering if you have plans to bring it to San Francisco. <laughs> Hey, Jacqueline. Hi, you guys. Um, so, yeah, thank you. I'm excited. Basically, what got me finally to do a solo show, because I've been wanting to do one for years, but I always got very nervous about it. Um, uh, I don't know, basically, my agents were like, hey, 54 Below, you want to do a show? And I said, you know what? Yes. Right, I might as well say yes and set a date, and then I can't say no, and I can't, you know, put it off anymore. So, just give myself a deadline, and then I have to do it. And then as far as, if all goes well, if I don't, you know, die and pass out while I'm just performing (laughs) without a script or costumes or lights or anything like that, just as me, feel wick, if all goes well, then hopefully um, I can start doing more concerts and... I would love to come 
you know, to go to California and do some shows there, do some little little solo concerts there. It's so happy. So, I think yeah. I think that's great. I I um I, I hope you know, I hope nothing happens in between now and and doing your show, but. Boy, if something happened during your show, that would be a concert everybody would talk about. <laughs> I will say that. <laughs> oh, They'll yeah, be like, yeah. were you there? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're so happy. I'm so appreciative, Jacqueline, that, that you were able to call in and uh, that all the that all the Twickies were, were, are listening. Um, I actually do have another question from one of your fans from Twitter, Ooh, uh, great. Jill Sell, is wondering if um, you'll be able to talk a little bit about your set list for the show, oh, which yeah. is actually something I wanted to talk about, and um, she uh, she adores you, so if you could tell us a little bit about your set list and maybe how you decided on some of the songs you're going to perform. Great. Um, so basically, the my set list is... It's kind. Of, it's a lot of just some of the my favorite songs that I listen to and sort of inspire me and get me through, you know, life. And I say are sort of the sound mm-hmm. of my life now. Um, and they're, they're kind of a lot of I embrace uh, sort of folk rock and kind of blues and a little bit of like bluegrass stuff that I just that I just really like. And as I've been working on putting the show together. It's, sort of evolved into um, this sound that my buddy Jasper and I are trying to embrace, kind of like a sparred down acoustic set. And it's a lot of singer-songwriters that I love, a lot of female singer-songwriters I love, like um, I'm going to do two Patty Griffin songs, um, mm-hmm. a Brandy Carlisle song, an Eco Cave mm-hmm. song, a Joni Mitchell song, mm-hmm. um, you know, celebrating the ladies. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> And then Are there any, any men in that mix? Well, yeah, there's a Van Morrison tune. Um, and actually, I'm going to be singing, that, uh, I'm doing, I'm going to do a cover of Cry to Me, which you, which you just played. I so love that song. one of my song. favorites. I do too. What, make, it, what makes it one of your favorite songs? I don't know. It, just, it literally just makes me want to, like, dance and groove. Um, and I... I fell in love with it back in the day when I was listening to the, my Dirty Dancing cassette tape that I have on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> when 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 uh, when I found it, when I was listening to the song, I was remembering the scene in Dirty Dancing where they're in yeah. his his room dancing, and and Davy just had that huge um, that huge blow up about how you know what she's scared of and all of that. It was yeah, uh, I love that moment. I love Isn't that moment. Isn't it great? I know. It, it, is oh, it's, it's one of my favorite so. moments in the in in the movie? <laughs> it yeah, is. it is. Go. Yeah. Cheers, cheers to that yeah. song. Yes, and uh, yes, yeah, Jill was very excited that you that you uh, were able to talk about her set list. She she does want you to know it's Jill Cohen. So oh yes, um, I do. Yes, <laughs> yes. So Jill, thank you for tweeting, and um, Jacqueline, thank you for calling in. So continue to tweet your questions, and I'll ask them to Teal as the night goes along. Tweet me at Call Me Adam NYC. And one of um, one of the other songs, uh, or one of the other uh, uh, singer songwriters you're going to be probably doing a song from is Janis Joplin, which oh, yeah. we're going to be playing a song of hers as well tonight. What what is it about Janis Joplin that that you love so much, especially because uh, we're going to be playing Get It While You Can. What, yes. what is it, especially about that song? I just, um, she, she's one of my favorite singers, and she's just, the passion and power that is in her voice and the way that she interprets the songs. If, when I open my mouth to sing, I, I dream that that's what's coming out of my mouth. Mm. It is not. I don't sound like that at all. But that's sort of my dream. And so I just, I... She's just pure, raw passion and soul, and, you know, she had very, she, you know, wasn't around very long, and I think she had a lot of tragedy in her life, but I think Mm -hmm. because she dedicated so much of her, like, her self into her art that it just, it, it comes across in everything that she recorded, so you 
you just have, I feel like you just have the essence of like of just this human being in her songs, and mm-hmm. I just uh, I just think she's she's incredible. Yes, you know, it took me. I wasn't I wasn't really until I saw uh, um, a night with Janice on, mm-hmm. on Broadway. That that show really made me have a new appreciation for Janis Joplin. I wasn't a huge fan of hers beforehand, but I get everything you're saying, especially after seeing that show. Wasn't that yeah. so amazing? It was oh. terrific. Yes. It, yes. I I wanted to pass out and cry because I was like, Janis Joplin, she's alive. She's mm-hmm. alive. She's on stage. Yes. Yes, I felt that. Even though even though you know I wasn't a huge fan, I still feel like wow, I was getting to see what could be Janis Joplin today. I mean... Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And one exciting fact about your 54 Below show on May 8th at 9.30, which, everybody listening, I hope you're going to get your tickets. It's 54below.com to get them. Um, it's your 54 Below debut. Yeah. I mean, it's my, it's my solo show debut. I've never done a show just by myself. Oh, my God. That... So what, what made now the right time to do a solo show and what what are you excited about what are you nervous about I know you talked a little bit about that but yeah um I think just I didn't really have any excuse to not do it um mm-hmm. and you know I had I had some time on my hands and this winter was mean out here in, mm-hmm. on the east coast so I feel like mm-hmm. I needed something exciting to like throw my energy into and something to sort of, you know, do for myself and try to, um, just, I, I'm excited that I get to present things that mean a lot to me and mm. do stuff that I probably wouldn't really get to do in a show, you know, like in a musical or anywhere else, just because, mm-hmm. I don't know, you know, I don't know, whatever, just, I don't, so it's, it's, it's just a night to get to sing some really great music with a great band and... Hopefully lots of friends and family will be there, and hopefully it'll just be a nice, fun love fest of music and joy and, yeah. That sounds, it's, it sounds like it's going to be <laughs> a really fun time. Um, we're almost out of time. I, I do want to just uh, ask one last question. Um, mm-hmm. and, and to make your solo debut, why 54 Below? What what it? Why, why there, out of all the cabaret rooms in the city? Oh, yeah, why there? Um, I just, I, I've been there a few times. I know it and I like it. And, um, mm-hmm. and there's such a lovely, there's such a high caliber of performers that go through there. And um, I feel like they're just a very, I don't, I, every place is very supportive, but just for me personally, they're very warm and supportive for kind of everybody and whatever they want to do there in the room for their performance and I don't know it's nice and it's cool it's a cool like cool supper club uh, it's just fun it's like you know and it's below Studio 54 hello mm-hmm. it's, le- like, it's legendary it's New York yeah yes. totally yes <laughs> I love seeing shows there it's, it's yeah. so much fun it's so much and fun it's good it's really yes. good yes the staff is amazing and it's yeah. some of the best sound in the city, so we're so excited that you're doing this. It's um, it's next it's next Thursday, May eighth. Yeah, already, a week away. Uh, a week 9:30 away. PM. Yeah. Yes, fifty four below. I can't believe we are out of time already. I did have one uh, fans of Teal Wicks on Twitter. They did want you to talk a little bit about Peace of My Heart. I, oh, I yeah. have to say, um, I can only we're really out of time, but. It's coming this summer, so we're going to have to have you back. And that sounds good, yeah. We it's will happening. do it's, it's a full coming. interview about <laughs> Peace of My Heart. So, right. um, yeah, Feels Wisdom, I'm sorry we can't talk about it right now, but we'll have Teal back, and we'll do a whole a whole show dedicated to it. So, Teal, thank you very much for your um, for your time. Everyone get your tickets to Teal's solo show at 54 Below. It's her debut, her solo show debut, 54 Below, May 8th at 9.30, 54below.com. And we're going to uh, head out with Janis Joplin's Get It While You Can. And then we'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. <laughs> 